Well, wouldn't it be, or do you think it would be a fair commentary for those who have seen what happened then, uh, people who are still walking free, say, look, I I've got trust issues with the pension system because having seen what happened, what's the guarantee that all of this will not happen anymore? No, no, no. The trust issue is no more. We have told you, one assurance is whatever was this part of the money lost during that uh, period is being murdered by the government. The government is paying. We have the arrears. These monies were meant probably would have been used to pay the arrears, and people took them away. And now government is paying the arrears. It's painful because it's our tax money. It's our money. It's my money. It's your money. But then, one good thing is that, uh, like the motto of the pensioners, so rest is sweet after labor. We want that the rest to be sweet. And therefore, government is making all efforts. It's, I, I must be very thankful to the executive, no, the sorry, government. You, you do seem a little pained, though, that yeah. you know, the people who stole this money uh, to perhaps possibly use the right word there, mm. uh, because it took money that, wasn't, that didn't belong to them. The people who stole this money are still working the streets free. Now, with this new law, as an amendment to the law, it's a little confusing now. Uh, are you satisfied that it's just 10 years we prescribe for those who mismanage pension funds? Do you think 10 years is sufficient or a fine or a combination of both, which is what the law recommends? No, let me tell you. Have you read the law? Some, Some parts of it. Yeah. Okay. Not only 10 years. could be a combination. Yes. And will be as the judge decides to understand. The 10 years is you have to refund the money. That's a minimum. Minimum three times. Understand? So you go for ten years. You will give us our money first. You will give us the poor ones our money three times, so that we will have we have our benefit, have this interest, and then we now to serve public, eh, to serve our example to others. You go to prison ten years. Because I we do remember at some point when we had this pension talk within the chambers of the Senate, the Senate President was extremely disgusted. And one of the things he said was that they deserved a death sentence. Yes. Who would have thought that we would be approaching that kind of extreme, considering just where we were coming from in terms of how you know pensioners have suffered, some of them dying on queues to be able to get their pensions. Yes. But let me tell you one thing. Lawmaking is lawmaking and a very tedious eh, process. You are, you, I, the senior president, the senior leader, we don't eh, told us how the father was suffering, eh? and others might be thinking that, look, it should be a death penalty. But others are now looking at, not only us, when you are making a law, you are not only influenced eh, by the paper, by the proposal before you, you are influenced by international environment. Eh? Uh, you have a, a, what do you call a, international uh, labor situation, the criminal justice situation, and uh, comparative analysis of what these laws, uh, how, how they are being made in other places. So it's not only what you have. You must think of a lot of factors, and then the Senate as it is, is 108 people when you remove the presiding officer. You must get everybody along. So and then, okay. apart from that, you go to the House of Reps, 360 people. So everyone has this. So for, to be able to pass one law, mm -hmm. you must be able to get everybody, uh, 469 people. Mm -hmm. eh? You must get majority of them. Personally, are you satisfied with that recommendation? To the extent of where we are going, yeah. I'm satisfied. I mean, at least for anybody, if you steal, I will discover like what we discover. I mean, we've taken our money one million, you pay us three billion, uh, three million, you take one billion, give us three billion. Any white thinking person who is not criminal by death and in blood will be scared from, uh, uh, will be scared from stealing. So, but if so, we still find somebody. Uh, who does that? Then we, the, 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 the law will tell you story. And let me tell you, we are talking about integrity. We are talking, that's the most serious matter of it. And we're doing everything. We panel eh, the law as it will protect the force, 
protect the sector, protect the retirees. But a criminally minded person, if you take a criminally minded person there, a small portion of the law will be no second to circumvent it. Mm. It's a thing of the mind. It's the integrity of the person administering the law. So that's why we must pray that whoever goes there must have integrity, must have the fear of God, must have love for the people, mm -hmm. must be sympathetic to the cause of the downtrodden. Even though some people would say, sorry, Even though some people would say that that's why we have laws, because we know that people will not always be like, like that. Uh, but looking at some of the amendments that you made, 18% was the increment. It's now from 15 to 18%. Uh, do you see a situation where all employers will be able to comply with the ten percent that they have to pay? Yeah, certainly. What we what we are thinking of is when it once again rests the street after level. We want to uh, make sure that when that man retires. We are thinking about inflation. We are thinking about the cost of living outside the office and all other things. And we, I will know it's going to be somehow painful to employers, especially private sector employers. But then, giving to uh, mankind is not only uh, rewarding by what we get from the business, it's also defined in nature. So we want to appeal to uh, the general, the, especially the employers uh, in any capacity you find yourself, to try and make sure you do it. Do it because it will be, it's worth doing. And again, suddenly, suddenly, it is cheaper than having these people roam the street after. The reason it's I ask that question is because to say that a lot of people say they were not carried along with the uh, public hearing you, you held on that. We, we carried everybody along. We took every stakeholder along in the public hearing. The public hearing, the average presentation during the public hearing was about 25 or 22.5%. 225 because we had to take well, the submissions. Was of the employers or labor? Well, when we, are, we, we, when we added the, the presentation of the employers, we added the representation of labor, others, you know, it's not only employer and labor matter. You have to take uh, this is what is international standard and all others. And then we come to an average of about 22.5%. And we said, well, by the circumstance of our situation and our work culture, it is not going to be possible to implement that. Let me quickly oh, bring in some Then we now brought it down to 18%. Senator, sorry, quickly, let me bring in some questions because uh, some people would want... Uh, I hope you've not forgotten the World Pension Summit. They're all connected, and uh, yeah. this has to do with uh, uh, also security I talked about, yes. protecting uh, people's uh, earnings uh, that they get us in the future. And uh, Gwando would want to know what exactly happened uh, with the reforms by Mena in that investigation that was carried out because he said some of Nigerians, like himself, believe that uh, pension thieves were the ones who influenced the Senate, in his words, to truncate Mena's reform on pension. So he said maybe if you help him out to explain some of this, things, uh, he will be better informed. Well, I think now that we've had this matter sorted out, I think I want to have my one-on-one -on -one in a studio like this for him to tell the world. Let him mention the reforms he did. My man spent so much money on biometric. And as we speak today, you can go in and ask the Director General at the DG of Pitat, ask PECOM, ask Ministry of uh, Head of Service. And he did not leave a file containing list of eh, qualified workers. No list. And yet, the government lost almost 3.8 billion in that exercise. We went to qualify uh, pensioners abroad eh, in almost about, uh, about nine or eight, nine countries. Up to today, we haven't got a list. We've not gotten any list. Any 
list of those people. Story said that the total number of people verified were nine. We came and said they were about 30 something. We said, look, verification is not done eh, of the listen. Then the list of verified that in South Africa, Johannesburg, you saw how many pensioners there. In Ghana, you saw how many. In Kenya, you saw how many. In Washington, this is the number I saw. In uh, Atlanta, this is how many I saw. In uh, New York, this is how many I saw. In London, how many I saw. In different areas. Then, so you look up the list. 